Hello everyone and um, welcome back to a new episode from Journal de Sylvie and if this is your first time here, thank you for stopping by. Today's episode is about nature journaling and uh, it's uh, one of my favorite uh, topics. Uh, just a quick disclaimer before I share my setup of today. If you are interested in this topic, I highly recommend you watch the video um, I made as part one for beginners or how to start a nature journal. Uh, because in, in, in that um, video I am sharing uh, through this B5 uh, nature journaling the mindset you need to have as an observer of nature and also the different techniques on how to visually illustrate and how to describe actually the um, species or uh, the botanical item or any any nature um, interesting facts you want to log in nature. So um, it really set the stage and the foundation for how to start one in terms of techniques uh, of uh, description and, and, and how to you know, describe the item you're observing. So, again, I highly recommend, I will leave its link in as the first link in the below description box. As for today, which is part two, I'm not gonna share much about the techniques. I'm gonna be sharing two things. First, the, um, the more portable version of my nature journal, because I wanted to take it to the field, uh, in terms of setup, like what do I have inside? And more important, I wanted to share how I lay out my pages. So moving with this, as I mentioned, um, um, it wasn't very practical for me to take this size to the field, uh, which nothing prevents you from doing this if you want to, if you are camping for a few days, if you are, have a big backpack, if maybe this is the only purpose of you going out in nature, you, you definitely can afford to take the big size, um, even with more stationery and colors. Uh, the only thing I would recommend is to have a hard cover because the paper one, in case it gets dusty or rainy, remember you're out there in nature, will be more practical than just, just the paper. However, if you are like me, where you happen to be in nature, not for that specific purpose, but you still want to um, log your observations and take field notes, then you will probably agree with me that um, creating a setup with uh, optimized size and weight uh, and portability will, will be much more efficient. So um, I picked the uh, camel color leather from Traveler's Company. Um, you can tell that anything leather or um, any hard cover will be probably uh, more tolerant to any uh, weather uh, condition. Um, and I combined this with a green binder here because I thought those two colors are uh, best relevant for uh, nature and trees. I picked that little uh, owl charm which I found so beautiful and relevant along with this clock. So now moving on to what I have inside, um, I basically, uh, after testing several things for practical reasons, I decided that I need two things in my entire setup. Obviously an insert where I log my notes and one uh, secretarial pouch of any sort. So I'll come to what I have in this uh, plastic uh, pouch a uh, few minutes later and why I decided this one among others. But now um, I want to be focusing on the insert, which insert I picked. So let me take it out of the traveler's notebook first. Okay, so uh, I took it out of the um, leather binder and um, the type of insert I picked for that purpose was the Kraft. Uh, it's not from Traveler's Company. I don't remember the brand, but there are plenty of other uh, inserts with Kraft uh, paper. Um, this is 100% for aesthetic reasons. You can use creamy white pages, you can use lined or grid, dotted. Uh, I just picked the craft because I felt it's uh, giving me the nature uh, vibes. Um, as for the cover, I decorated it using the um, Tim Holtz stamps. Um, and this set particularly was all about field labeling and um, 
botanical illustrations, birds, uh, insects, and numbers to tag. So I print uh, probably or most of the items here on a craft paper like this one, a bit thick, and then I cut it and I add a combination of it over here, layering on the top of each other. It's quite sturdy, nothing is moving. And I added the colored small um, nature uh, ephemera from also Tim Holtz. So there are plenty of stickers out there with the botanical illustrations and species. Uh, so you can decorate and have fun with your insert with a relevant theme of nature. I also uh, decorated the first page as um, I always leave it, uh, still with the theme of nature. Now as for the pages, I uh, started with um, a layout but then I retired it after the first page and I moved on to a more practical one. So I will share both and you can see which one is more uh, fun or practical in your circumstances. So first I started by, as you can see here, creating everything manually, um, where I uh, created a table, but the concept was I followed was that in the left hand side is the information and moving on to the right is more about the visual illustrations. Uh, so when it comes to information I need to log, I had to create a table with a header uh, that pretty much logs the main information of uh, location, uh, the weather, uh, the date, and you can take this further to specify how um, the duration and the distance you took uh, in your path, um, more details about the temperature, the elevation, and so on. Um, and, and I like the way it, it came up. I added some uh, uh, doodling that I did. I also, um, it, it's a combination of me sketching and printed pictures from my pocket printer. Um, so I, I really liked it. The only reason I retired this is because I found it was time consuming and if I didn't have the, the table set then I'm, I'm not ready to go. I had to take the time to, to put everything together. Remember we are taking now the notes in the field so I need something to be more um, ready. So I moved on to this concept and in this concept as you see that I um, I glued a grid page on the left hand side, which I still follow the theme that it, the left hand side is observation and the right hand side is more for visual illustrations. And uh, this kind of gave me the happy medium and the best of the two worlds. So on the left hand side, I have a grid page that is divided to three columns, as you can see here. And uh, on the right hand side, I still enjoy the uh, brown craft color of the page where I add more of the pictures um, that we took from the field. Now, uh, giving a closer look to what do I include in my, um, what do I include in my left hand side table? So you will notice that I have three, everything is set on a vertical layout, um, again up to preference, but I have like three columns. The first column is uh, identifying the minimum information that you need to, which is location, date, time, and weather. And uh, if you are doing nature observation, associating your uh, observation with a geographic location and a timeline makes a whole difference because it depends on the date, what time of the year, and it depends actually what time of the day and it depends on the location, that um, is what specify what type of flowers you will see, depends on the season, what type of species you will observe. So uh, geographic location and timeline time are key to identify when you are observing nature. The second column over here is simply for the species uh, name observed. I have to admit that not every time I observe something I know its name, so it's fine. Uh, you can come back home and fill the blanks, uh, which will be very educative by the way. But if it's something you already know its name, you can right away log its name and maybe kind of give it a little bit of a bold um, or maybe different color to stand out as the name of the species. 
Um, underneath the name, I still have a space to add a couple of information. I usually pick to um, give a number that represents how many of that species I observed. Like if it's one uh, or maybe a colony or more than five, um, especially um, when, it's, when we're talking about uh, animals, right? Is it one duck? Was it a group of ducks or so on? And I also add here this abbreviation that I um, highlight in green, which represents the conservation status. I'll probably talk about uh, this type of classification in um, another part of Nature Journal, but this is basically for now representing whether there is a threat for that species or not. So this is LC, least concern. Obviously, there were no threat for this. Um, and the last column um, on the uh, left-hand side here is very small mini description of what you observe. So remember, the space is also optimized, same as everything in the version of, on, on this version of Ready to Go Nature Journal. Same way we optimized size and weight, we're also optimizing the amount of information we are adding because we are on the field. But if you want to take this further and add even more fun facts, remember you always have the big size notebook where you can come back home and do a mini research about it. But for now, um, we also add basically dimensions and visual description. For example, how big is this item in terms of length or weight? and also um, maybe describe its color. Um, I know sometimes um, if this um, species is native or alien to the area we live in, that's also a fun fact you can add. Um, and then when now you, the way you read this is you have um, horizontal sections that represent every uh, species and nature. On the right hand side, you have here the pictures, which I want to say it's the fastest way to visually illustrate, uh, because if you're sketching, you'll probably need some more time in nature, some more time looking at the species itself. It depends how good you are with sketching. Now that I added the pictures over here, obviously numbered following the, the number that you have on the uh, left hand side, and you still maybe have some small room to add a fun fact later when you research in Wikipedia that species. Um, it's, it's, it can be quite interesting and educative. Um, over here is the same concept, nothing new to share. Nothing really is strict. You still can add a small picture on the right hand side. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be only information if you run out of space and you want to add a picture, that's absolutely fine. Um, and um, also, this page here offers a new idea that you can change the technique of the picture. So um, I wanted to add more birds here, and if um, instead of printing uh, three pictures, each two times three, I did print them, but then I cut the bird out of the picture and as a sticker, and I, and obviously that allowed me to add more birds here. Um, another idea is that you can add extra item uh, that you did not actually observe. So when I came back home and I did a mini research about the American black vulture, I thought that the the color or the the shape of its eggs. It's very interesting, so I did print it from Google and I added it here. Uh, so it's okay if you took your research a little bit further than what, what uh, you actually observed in nature. Um, another idea over here for visual illustrations is when you have a picture but you have another angle for the same species. So, and you don't want to overcrowd your page because remember we don't have much space. So I added the picture where it represents the entire uh, you know, layout of the duck, but I also found that the face view, which is one of the techniques I talked about in part one, is very interesting. So I cut from the paper, uh, sorry, from the picture only the face view and I added it as if it's a zoom in uh, and I applied that technique uh, in it. I came back home and I actually I didn't know the name of that duck and I still have it unidentified so if anyone knows which duck is this please leave me a comment below I'm sure if I go further and describe it more maybe in Google something will come up I hope so 
something else from that uh, layout you can uh, take is that if you run out of space for pictures, you can also attach two pictures, one um, after the other, like one on the back of the other, and stick it with a washi tape if you want to add more pictures. Um, and also, if you do a mistake, that's a way that I covered it. I took another great piece of uh, paper and I covered it because I was mislabeling the owl we observed uh, in the state park. Um, I, I mentioned that you still can add a small picture in the side where you have your notes. Nothing really is strict about that. And if you were in the park and you observed species that you already observed and logged, uh, from previous uh, times or um, because when you live in an area you probably repeatedly see, you may see the same species again it's okay you don't have to add another picture of it if you don't want to but you can just log your observation like today I saw duck, beaver, a white aigret, um, small brown bird and a blue heron okay so um, you can save the space for the species that was observed for the first time. Those are probably will take priority. As you can see here, we were in a state park where it's famous with alligators and uh, we actually saw them in quite a bit of a proximity. Um, also a beaver, you know, you, you don't see that as much as, for example, when you see ducks in a lake. In this page layout, I want to share the um, when you don't have a picture, that's fine too. Uh, maybe because um, you couldn't take one or you didn't have the time to sketch. For example, I was visiting a, a cavern here and we saw like really, really small uh, bats uh, called tricolored bats. And by the way, they are not least concerned, like they are vulnerable, so they are threatened to be disappearing gradually from Earth. In that case, you can still go to Google and print a picture uh, or sketch it from the pictures you have in Google or you just can leave it blank. Uh, and, but however, you still uh, logged your observation with a minimum description about it. And think about this when you look back and you have it all filled. This will be like um, a place or a library where you logged everything you uh, observed in nature. And I promise you, if you develop this uh, habit of nature journaling, uh, it will change completely the way you uh, interact with nature because now you have an observant eye and you're not looking, uh, you're not just passing by, you're looking with a, a little bit of more meditation and uh, more um, observant uh, point of view. So it's really fun, it's uh, very relaxing and it helps you to appreciate the wonders we have around us in nature. So um, of course you can continue to decorate your the back of the insert. I actually dedicated the very middle uh, for just a gallery of pictures, maybe a picture of something I already described, but like a different angle or my favorite. You can add your own pictures here, like make um, a wall of your memories. And nothing is wrong, this is not a science book, so nothing is wrong that you log your field uh, observations and also associate this with beautiful moments, maybe you in, in the, that park, um, a memory of you while you're doing that. Make it fun, make it personal, and um, yeah, and let me know how it goes. Now moving back to the rest of the setup and what I have in my secretarial pouch. The classic plastic uh, zipper. I think this brought the advantage of everything because first of all, it did have the secured pocket which the semi-fabric uh, pouch gives you. So it has the secure pocket which means it can be this the place where you collect the samples or it can which is my case, uh, you can leave there uh, a small plastic um, zip bag or a craft bag like this one for collecting the samples. It can be a small uh, flower uh, leaf, you know, until you go back home and sketch it or uh, dry it. 
And uh, also for this one is very practical because you get the um, you can add seashells, especially if they are still muddy or sandy or if something is not really polished yet, uh, you can put it in, in this zipper pouch uh, plastic ziplock secured. Um, whether you're gonna take it back here if it's flat, but if it's not and maybe you're collecting something with a little bit more dimension, that's fine, you can use this and then put it in your backpack. You need something to host your writing board and even the writing board you can add it in the middle of the insert nothing will happen it probably will not fall one extra grid to cut and cover mistakes or create a new table and some guidance of uh, conversions or uh, abbreviation that we typically use in nature journal now putting everything together i will show you the final look so as you can see here, putting it back together, it, the final look will be uh, the plastic folder um, that hosts the few details to complement your nature journal, the main insert where you log your information or your observation, and of course the back side of that uh, plastic folder which we call sample collect. Uh, and that's it. Now, really, um, if, if you try this setup, you will notice it's very lightweight. It's um, very practical. If there is anything you saw that I didn't cover or you have any question, please let me know in below comments. Um, and shortly after, I will have another part for Nature Journal um, on how to classify your data. Uh, and also what is the stationery that you need whether you are nature journaling from home uh, or from the field. I hope you enjoyed it and find it in any way informative. Uh, thank you so much for your time and see you in the next video. Happy journaling!